stay for the home opener at Desert Financial Arena. Part of Pac-12 tip-off week presented by Tums today. Number 18, ASU taking on Houston Baptist of the Southland Conference. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Weber. Pleased to be joined by Eddie House. Eddie, it is great to be back in this building for the first time since March, spotlighting an ASU team that has a chance to make program history. They have a real opportunity to win a basketball title for the first time here in the Conference of Champions. Yeah, and they got to love their chances. This is Bobby Hurley's deepest, most athletic, most talented team I believe he's had here at Arizona State. I think if they tighten up their defense a little bit, they'll be able to score with any team in the country, and they definitely have a great chance to win a conference championship. Led by the preseason All-American, Remy Martin back for his senior year, trying to bounce back after he was held to just five points on Thanksgiving and a loss to number three, Villanova. Well, this is a guy that can do it all. He can get to the basket, he can finish um, at the rim, he can shoot his floaters, he can shoot the ball from anywhere on the court, he has quick hands, an excellent defender, and he's a playmaker. Only having five points against Villanova, I'm expecting him to have a big bounce back game today. Martin averaged 19 points a game last year, second best in the conference. A look at the starting lineup, you'll notice a change. Alonzo Verge Jr. will not play today. An Arizona State official telling us it is not related to a team discipline issue. So, Kaysan Cherry into the starting five after making 11 starts last year. Taking on Houston Baptist, a team that only won four games last year in part because they gave up the most points in all of D1 hoops, 93 points a game. Eight newcomers on the roster dropping their opener Wednesday at TCU, paced by Pedro Castro, a bright spot with a team high, 13 points at Fort Worth. All eyes on Remy Martin, who was human on Thanksgiving, but credit the defensive tenacity of Villanova, and we know what Martin is capable of on limited range, and he certainly is looking to rebound in a major way against a team that has a variety of matchup issues in this one. Here is the sophomore point guard, Miles Pierre, off the mark, and Cherry gets involved instantly with the rebound. Martin to kick out. Super front. Josh Christopher was dialed in the last time ASU played. 28 points, and we know he's the first McDonald's All-American to come to Tempe since James Harden. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, if you look at what Remy Martin just did right there at, on that possession, was get into the paint and find a guy for an open shot. He has, to get, he has to get his teammates involved, and the game will be easy for him. Let it come to him. Shot clock hits 10. Ty Dalton on the drive. And it's not free by Cherry, who is showing that energy that is connected to his game on both ends of the floor. Arizona State opened the year with the win over Rhode Island. Playing both games inside Bubbleville at the Mohegan Sun. And there's the other highly touted freshman. We know about the unlimited potential of Marcus Bagley. And for a big player, Eddie, he has great outside touch. Yeah, not only is he athletic, he can stretch the floor and knock it down. He has excellent touch. Speaking of excellent touch, we see Castro knock one down right there. And he was the offensive lifeline in the opener against TCU on Wednesday when Houston Baptist could not buy a bucket to start the game. They opened trailing 19 to two. Better start clearly here at Arizona State. Martin, got it! Last year he knocked him down from three point range at a 34% clip. And I was speaking about it in the open. He'll shoot it from anywhere. He's Five feet behind the three-point line, you have to guard him as soon as he crosses half court. Bobby Hurley thrilled that Martin came back for his senior year after considering heading to the NBA. Hunter Janacek answers from distance, the junior from Houston, now playing for his third school after starting his college career at Lafayette. Good pace to this one, and that was the offensive approach we thought both teams would utilize as Cherry drops it in. Not like Arizona State's ball movement. They are moving the basketball. It's not sticking. It's not staying in somebody's hands. They're not dribbling the air out of it. They don't have a shot. They kick it to somebody who has an open shot. This is Hunter Janicek trying to create contact, and he's working his way to the line. Our officials this afternoon, Mike Reed, DJ Nelson, and Ryan Holmes. 
And if you don't know about him, you're going to learn about him right now. You got to get out there and put a hand up. That's not enough. That is not enough by Miles Pierre. You have to try to run him off that shot. Remy can make that consistently without a hand in his face. And we know that Remy is capable of critical shots in big moments at the game winner against USC last year. You got to check. Injured last year, so coming off the medical redshirt. Houston native. Last played at Angelina College in Lufkin, Texas. This is a Houston Baptist team that has the monumental challenge each year in non-conference play of hitting the road to take on some of the best programs in the nation. Last year going to Michigan. Later on, before they head into the Southland Conference, they'll have a road trip to Norman, Oklahoma to take on the Sooners, but they're hanging tough at the outset. Tied at eight to start this one in the home opener here in Tempe. Martin through the Jalen Graham screen. And Jalen now will work his way into the lane. Martin the kick out. Bagley for three, and he buries it. Picture perfect. Get, your, get a paint touch, find your shooters in the corner. Marcus Bagley sliding down, creating space for himself to get an open shot, a lane for Remy to make the pass. Perfect offense. Marcus, the grandson of ASU legend. Jumping Joe Caldwell has deep ties to this program. Younger brother of Marvin Bagley, former number two overall pick. Coming out of Duke to go into the Sacramento Kings. Well, you figured that Martin would be highly motivated after the aberration of the tough game offensively the other night, and he's getting his teammates involved. Yeah, and that's extremely key for you if you are a scorer. You want to get other guys involved. That way, gaps will open up. You'll be able to attack the basket much easier, and everybody's not just focused on you. Holland Woods into the game, a marquee transfer from Portland State, where he wrapped up his career as their all-time leader in assists and steals. And he's come back home to the Valley of the Sun, played his high school basketball here in the Phoenix area at Apollo High, and was the runner-up for Player of the Year up. I tell you what, you look at Remy Martin's body, um, we know he's been in the weight room. During this COVID, he's took advantage of the long off season and made sure that he worked on his body coming back for his senior year to put himself in a great position to get drafted next year. Into the game for Houston Baptist is their big fella, Zach Ige Yemi, listed at 250, but chatting with their charismatic longtime head coach, Ron Cottrell, he says that Zach has worked hard to drop 50 pounds. And you can see that that's a much leaner physique than somebody who's typically listed at 250 will be sporting. 10 to shoot for Remy Martin. Looking to build on this three-point lead. Cherry wide open. And he's trying to bounce back from a shooting slump, especially from the outside a year ago, looking for much more consistency this year. Pierre can't drop it down. But we have a whistle off the ball. Well, we figured we'd see plenty of offense. This one living up to our expectations. It's ASU on top by three. You're watching. Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tip-Off Week is presented by Tums for fast heartburn relief. Arizona State happy to be home here in the Grand Canyon State on top of HBU by three after an arduous week of travel. Certainly no holiday for the Sun Devils. You can see all the particulars as they went east, played two games at the Empire Classic, the Bubbleville setup at the Mohegan Sub Resort in Connecticut. And Eddie, we know that we're all adjusting to the COVID protocols, that goes for the players as well. Yeah, it does, but what it is really, it gives some of these guys who have professional aspirations an opportunity to see how that life really is. That's how life is gonna be for you on the next level. So get used to it, and I think that they'll be fine. They got young legs. Those are young fellas out there. <laughs> and not like the old days of being stuck in the back of the plane on coach. <laughs> Certainly a much different approach to travel here in 2020. Christopher, can't hit. He was almost unstoppable in the high school ranks in Southern California. Averaged 39 points a game. Remember, high school games are much shorter as he wrapped up his All-American season. 
That is good defense by Arizona State, and we're going the other way. Bobby Early has done a magnificent job in Tempe, starting his sixth season, three consecutive 20-win seasons, back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances, the only Pac-12 school to achieve that feat, and clearly they would have moved on to the field of 68 last year if we had an NCAA tournament, thanks in large measure to what Remy Martin did last year and what he's doing to start this year. Yeah, no doubt, and Remy is definitely the team leader. Um, he does it defensively and offensively, and I like how he started this game, getting his teammates involved, and then now he's trying to look for his own. How about Christopher turning defense into offense? Coast to coast for the Super Frosh. And I think this is when the Sun Devils are at their best. When they get stops, to push it in transition. You have athletes all over the court, and they can make plays for themselves, and they also can make plays for others. So run the lanes, get wide, and just run, 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 because I think you're more athletic than most teams you're going to be facing. Danicek tried to get back defensively. Josh Christopher had many reasons to take his talents here at Arizona State. Among them, the fact that his older brother Caleb was already on the roster. The numbers superlative for one of the most prolific scorers in the history of Southern California prep basketball. And think about all the big names that have come through the LA area. We mentioned that Christopher was dialed in for 28 points in a loss to Villanova. He flirted with the all-time freshman record, single points in a game set by Super Mario Bennett, who knocked down so many shots on his way to the 35-point effort against Arizona 92. That's a well-designed sequence, finding Castro, and clearly that is the goal for HBU. They know they have matchup issues, but Castro is going to be their offensive lifeline. Yeah, and, and, and once he gets going, he has to continue to get it going and hope that his teammates can pick up some slack when he makes plays for them. Offensive foul against Bagley. He was too strong on the baseline. I wanted to piggyback off of uh, Josh Christopher. Everybody talks about how good he is offensively. I think he's very underrated as a defender. Um, that's a part of his game that I that stuck out stood out stood out to me. Excuse me, when I watched him in high school, how his instincts were in tune with the game. He blocked shots and he got steals. And credit the Excellent defensive player. tenacity of Janicek. Beg your pardon to stand his ground and draw that defensive foul. And here is Hunter with the recovery. He'll try a deep three. But we know a shooter always have a good sense of where that rebound might go. Keep that ball moving. And Janicek is going to the line. Very smart play by Janicek there. Knowing that these guys are athletic. Hey, use your head fake, pump face, get guys in the air. Here it is right here. Yannis knowing that Bagley is super athletic and go for the block, use the pump fake, get him in the air, and go to the free throw line. So Bagley picking up two quick personals in the span of less than a minute, and it feels like a hockey line change coming up for Bobby Early. Wholesale changes set to hit the floor. Yannicek outstanding from the line. In his junior college career, 92% last time he played compared to basketball. Graham comes back in. Surprisingly, they're leaving Bagley in there. He has two fouls. You would think he would come out. And a good sign from the health perspective for ASU that Kamani Lawrence able to play for the first time this year after he was sidelined for the first two games with the knee injury. And Kamani's just dealt with a series of bad luck when it comes to injuries, and good to see him feeling better this afternoon. Really great to see him out on the court. So happy to see him get back on the on the floor. It's, it's so miserable when you're injured and you're watching your guys practice, watching the guys get opportunity to play games, and all you could do is sit down and watch. So, so happy to see him back out there. Kamani, the senior from Providence, averaged five points in 17 minutes a year ago. Bag lead, despite being saddled with the two fouls, will stay on, as Eddie noted. Graham working baseline up and under, and he spins it down. He averaged three points in 11 minutes of action a year ago. It was a real nice move, a veteran move. Caught it, went quick with it, didn't allow the defense to set up baseline for the help, and finish on the other side of the rim to negate the shot block. ASU raising their intensity defensively and your son that's his foundation for his basketball approach as Jalen House came up with it 
Holland Woods unable to hit the three-pointer. The ball keeps on moving. Lawrence with the strong move. And if, you, and if you're Coach Hurley, that's what you want to see mostly is the ball movement, guys moving their bodies and moving the ball to make sure that they get open shots. But quick move by Jalen Graham to rip through, go to the other side of the basket, can't get, can't block the shot. Good move by the, the sophomore. You talk about Remy Martin putting the work in. Same story for Graham. He has bulked up considerably. Well, it's been a slow start for Bagley, but he's got plenty of help in the paints. And Kamani Lawrence making the most of his return to the floor. Just being active, never settling, not anticipating the ball is going to go in, attacking the ball in the air and putting it up quick, getting the and one. That's a great feel for Kimani Lawrence to get your first basket. Your first shot is right at the basket, and then you get to go to the free throw line to get another easy one. As Ayante Boothman came in to pick up the foul, Cherry returns. Good development for ASU that Bagley comes off without picking up his third personal foul. Kamani broke his foot. His freshman year had shoulder tendonitis last year. We discussed the knee issue this year, but he's looking to do special things in his senior season. Woods with the steal. Lays it off for Kamani Lawrence, and Arizona State has asserted themselves as the lead bulges to 10. That's Ayante Boothman who's back here in Arizona. Freshman from Buckeye, about 45 minutes away. Wait at Union High School, and defense is going to be a huge part of ASU realizing their goals this year, I think. Yeah, and if they're able to play defense this way, turn teams over, get more opportunities at the basket, get more possessions off of their defense, they're going to be tough to contend with because, of, number one, they have athletes everywhere and guys that can score anywhere. Once more, excellent ball movement, finds the open woods, and he nails the three. The transfer from Portland State earned first team all Big Sky honors last year. At this point, Houston Baptist merely needs a bucket to hang around, but Janicek came up with the air ball. And again, just off ball movement, a good slash cut by Tayshawn Cherry, kicks it over to the corner to Kimani. Kimani plays hot potato with it, gets it to the open man, and Holland Woods knocks it down. Holland Woods is an excellent shooter. You know, you say he averaged 17 points at Portland State, so this guy can score and fill it up. One off for 39 points last year against Montana, so he is certainly capable of big things on this end of the floor. Graham backing down, now faces up and rattles it in. And it looks like he's been in the lab because he didn't have that move with him last year. So it looks like he put in a lot of work this summer, a lot of work on working on his offensive game and getting better. ASU picking up the defensive pressure. It pays off. Lawrence traveled. He was looking to connect with a wide open. Holland Woods. Well, this game was tight at the outset. But since then, it's been all ASU jumping out to a 27-12 lead on their home floor. Marcus Bagley with six early points to go along with a couple personal fouls as Arizona State has built a commanding lead over Houston Baptist. Here's the profile of the school that has a will play anyone mentality in our sport. And that is a reflection of what Ron Cottrell has meant to this program. Closing in on 500 career victories now in his 30th year. You can see where that puts him among some legends. Basketball Hall of Famers, Jim Beheim, Coach K. Cottrell with 491 career wins. Fifth longest tenured active coach in D1 hoops. Former athletic director of this university. He is a deacon and had a wonderful conversation with him about the mission statement of this university as Ryan Gomes, another transfer for Houston Baptist, is fouled on his way to the goal. A team that only won four games last year, all coming in conference play in the Southland Conference. Pick two, finish last again in their conference in the preseason poll. If you follow college basketball closely, you know all about Stephen F. Austin and what a great year they had in the Southland last year. 28-3 and a win over Duke. 
Would have been phenomenal to see them in the NCAA tournament. Of course, that did not happen. Boothman, the Arizona native, welcome home. Yeah, Boothman with a corner three. You can't help off the corner three. Jalen House sucks in on the drive. That's not his help. He sucks in, the ball's kicked to the corner. He has to recover, and it's too late. Good shot by Boothman, good play by HBU. Who was all states last year, averaged 26 points. The House family gets involved. Jalen, who did not play the last time out against Villanova, knocks down the long-range shot. Yeah, and that's what he has to do. When he gets the opportunity to knock down open shots, he has to knock them down. That's what the culture is going to trust him for. If he's not able to find his shot, it's going to be hard for him to stay on the floor. Eight Arizona State players have tallied, and the ball movement has been sensational. Lawrence is making the most of his return from the knee injury, up to seven early points, and the lead has grown to 32-15. Philip McKenzie kicks it out. Jade C., the freshman from New York City, played at Archbishop Malloy, fabled school that produced Kenny the Jet Smith and Kenny Anderson. Shot not there for Boothman, and another transition look for ASU House. Catch and shoot. His father must like that. I wish I was working with him. Well, that's a big shot for him, big confident booster for him. He's been in the gym working on it, so if you get your shot, you have to take it. And if we have casual fans joining us today, Jalen is the son of Eddie House, my broadcast partner, all-time leading scorer in the history of Arizona State basketball. Gomes, aggressive. And that is exactly what Chris Austin has brought this program, the transfer from Lee College in Texas, as we take another look at the house family tradition of being locked in from distance. Yeah, you got to run the floor. When you don't have the ball, you got to run the floor, run the spots where you could get an open shot. He ran. Um, Holland Woods was able to draw the defender and kick it to the open man, and he knocked down the shot. Mention Austin, who is a very aggressive defender, Hard work is his M.O., and he was pivotal in the final minutes of the season opener at the Mohegan Sun against Rhode Island after Arizona had a major lead dissolved. It was Austin who came up with a putback plus one for that pivotal three-point play. And you got to always have a guy like that on your team who doesn't need plays called for him, doesn't need the ball to be effective. On and right there, to the bucket. you throw the ball up to him, and he's able to finish. And he's got a little bit of athletic ability, too. Don't just call me a blue-collar player. Oh, he C knifes his way, but cannot finalize. Up the floor, Christopher. This is not in the stat sheet, but that was because of Austin. That's because he was there to, to kind of deter him from having a clean look at the layup. Made him force a bad shot. They were off to the races after the miss. Boothman, the floater, tracking down his own miss. Austin is getting involved on both ends of the floor. And we knew that ASU had the dilemma of replacing Romello White in the paint. Austin's going to be part of that team approach. It is all working for the Sun Devils. Bagley stripes a three. 42-15 coming up on eight minutes remaining in this lopsided first half. Bagley directing traffic. Martin isolation working on C and the freshman is ticketed with the foul. Martin really feeling right there that, hey, he had an advantage on the post. You don't see the point guard post up that much, um, a la Tim Hardaway. Right there, you get a, a smaller guy on you and use your body a little bit. This is a, just a good drive. You catch the man slipping, the big man is stepping up to stop the drive, and you just lob it up to the, to the basket, and Austin's so springy, he's going to finish around that rim with a dunk. Remy 77% from the line last year. And given the scoreboard, we're going to start to see even more reserves. I mentioned Caleb Christopher, the family connection. That was a major factor in Josh deciding to come to Tempe. Caleb, the sophomore who saw limited playing time a year ago, only was able to get on the floor in nine games. He'll try to savor his run this afternoon. Not much is working for Houston Baptist. Castro has it come off the rim. Austin looking to follow his own miss. 
Kicks it out with another rebound. Oh! Style points on his way to the bucket. Caleb Christopher. A 19-0 run for Arizona State. And it all started with their defense. They turned up their defensive intensity, and HBU hasn't been able to answer until right then. And uh, what a good play right there by Darius Lee um, with the reverse layup to answer a 19-0 run. Lee was a D2 All-American at SUNY Sullivan coming from the East Coast. He's working on his fitness, but undeniably he is a scorer. And making his presence felt defensively with the rejection. One thing I've noticed for HBU, everything has been hard. Everything has had some sort of resistance to it. And that trend continues as Lee picks up the foul. Sun Devils, red hot and rolling here at Tempe. It's been an offensive showcase for Arizona State. That is the focus of our Tom's Worthy Moment. Eddie, just about every player on the roster has gotten involved. Yeah, and, I, and, and more importantly, not only everybody's getting involved offensively, you got to love the intensity to have on the defensive end, which is creating these opportunities for other guys to touch the basketball in transition, to get a wide open shots, to get to the rim and finish at the rim. If you're Coach Bobby Hurley, you're loving everything that you're seeing right now because the intensity level is, is at an all-time high. This is the hardest I've seen them play since the season started. Stats can be misleading, but the tail of the tape in this one indicative of just how one side it has been since roughly the 16-minute mark. Arizona shooting a sizzling 58% floor, and unfortunately for Houston Baptist, shades of what bogged them down in their season opener Wednesday against TCU in that first half. It took them the better part of 17 minutes to score as they trailed 19-2 at the outset. More competitive start on the road in this one, but... They have been outclassed as this game has progressed. Josh Christopher off the mark from the outside. And I, I know Christopher can score, but I just love when that ball moves around. You can get that shot anytime. You can get it at the end of the shot clock, but when it moves around, you can get wide open shots. And Yannick, right, Yannicek right there knocking one down. Shooter shoot, and that's exactly what Ron Cottrell said that Hunter Yannicek was capable of. It's been mostly his contributions. He is leading Houston Baptist with nine points to start this game. Tremendous story in number 51, a name you're going to learn to appreciate here in Tempe, Pavlo Zuba, freshman from Ukraine. When he signed with ASU, he was merely 16 years old. Since then, he's had his 17th birthday, and he is the youngest player in all of Division I basketball. Isn't that something? Coming all the way across the world to play his college basketball. And that is vintage, Christopher, all the way to the goal. Yeah, it is. And that, I just, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again. I think Arizona State is at their best when they are in transition. Everybody's running the wing. They're so athletic. It's going to be hard for teams to match up with their athleticism. And then in the half court, just move the ball because the same thing is, same results can happen. Lee on the drive, backing up his credentials as a first-team All-American in the D2 ranks, where he averaged 18 points a game at SUNY Sullivan, a D2 power. Remy Martin creating an eye for the rebound. Castro up the floor. Dalton reversal, and he drops it in. Taya, senior from Houston, went to Second Baptist High School, playing for his third school after starting his career at Akron. And Dalton understanding that Christopher is extremely athletic, uses the other side of the basket to negate the shot blocker. Arizona State a year ago averaged 74 points. Remy Martin was instrumental in that, and he is feeling it. You figured that he was going to bounce back in a major way after he stymied and held to just five points against Villanova. Eddie, look at that shot. And that's indicative of the work that he's put in in the weight room because that takes strength right there. You're standing still. There's no momentum really going to get you up and going. They stop you from pulling up your shot, and you're able to gather the ball, strong hands, still get it up to the basket and knock it in. And it was all net. C with the personal, so 
Let's go old school. You and I are not 21 anymore. Maybe Larry Johnson, four-point play here. Larry Johnson, old school. Remember that back in the day at MSG? Yeah. 1999? Don't tweet at me. Yes, I know. I'm not as young as I sound. Hey, back when the Knicks were decent. <laughs> I thought you were going to go 1973. <laughs> Willis Reed is not limping through that door. Inside five minutes remaining in the no first No time half. soon. Brian Weber, <laughs> Eddie House with you. Dalton for three, and he knocks it down. He connected on a 28% clip a year ago from the perimeter. And I'm telling you what, man, as a basketball, former basketball player, well, basketball player, when you get that easy layup, it seems like the your open shots, you knock them down with a little bit more consistency. Plenty of space for Graham. And he's heading to the line as seeing a few more zone principles from Houston Baptist on the defensive end of the floor. And that will challenge Arizona State's offense to move the basketball to get paint touches. That's the one thing. If they're, a team is playing a zone, they're telling you off rip that they can't guard you one-on-one. -on -one. And there's matchup problems out there. So if you move the ball, move the bodies, you'll have an opportunity to take advantage of that. Bobby Hurley. Speaking to the local media with so many positives and describing the play of Jalen Graham, who struggled from the line last year but didn't have a ton of opportunities, 36% shooter. Bobby saying that Jalen has done all the right things, putting in the work. He's also growing into his body, and he's grown over an inch since he first came to ASU. And that has to feel good to know that you're still growing. I know when I came, I was done. You did okay. I did all right. I'm looking up. I think your number's somewhere in the rafters. Yeah, I, got, I just got a little faster. I didn't, get, <laughs> I didn't get taller. I got a little faster. Dalton is fouled as he got within a couple feet of the bucket. There's Eddie House, the all-time leading scorer in the history of Arizona State basketball, representing the Bay Area in the Valley of the Sun and a world champion. Now, where's the ring? It's, uh, tucked away safely. Okay, don't say it that people might know. No, I'm not. Be, right? I just said tucked away safely. All right. You can tell me later. I'll put it on Twitter. Four minutes remaining. Defense leading to the offensive opportunity to cap this magnificent first half. Christopher to Christopher. Brothers in sync. All started with the defense on the defensive end for Arizona State. Active hands, getting steals, getting out in transition. A three, and that's driven down, and you can see why. Ty Dalton is a fundamentally sound player. And he's playing with extreme confidence, and it started with that layup, and he's knocked down a couple shots since then. If I was him, I'd be looking to get more aggressive on the offensive end because he looks like he's in a really good rhythm. Dalton has eight points. Graham got fouled. And Eddie's son, Jalen House, setting up Josh Christopher to the buckets. Conference play tipping off Wednesday with a doubleheader. Starting at 5 p.m. Pacific, it's Colorado and Arizona. Nightcap features Oregon State and Washington State Wednesday here on Pac-12 Network or watch wherever you are with Pac-12 Now. We detailed Remy Martin deciding to forego the NBA and Colorado certainly hoping that McKinley Wright has made the right decision both for him as an individual and the program to push off the NBA for another season because Eddie, we know, McKinley is capable of being an impact player. No doubt, one of my favorite players in the Pac-12. I've been following him since he was a freshman. He's just a bulldog out there. And as we think about these players balancing what they want to do personally and achieving their dream of going to the NBA versus realizing team goals, factor in all the COVID changes this year. No pro days, no individual workouts, having to hook up with teams potentially on a Zoom call. So no surprise we saw a myriad of players decide to return for another year here in the Pac-12. No whistle as Pierre tumbles to the deck. And he's guilty of traveling. Pierre, the sophomore from Charlotte, team leader, not only at the points, but one of the vocal fellas in the locker room as Ron Cottrell 
really feels that basketball is just part of what they're trying to do at Houston Baptist, knowing that the majority of these players are going to have their careers end when they're done playing for him. And he really is a man who instills all of the right things that we love about our sport. Woods gives it up. Lawrence has had a very nice first half, unable to drop it down. And here is an opportunity up the floor for McKenzie, but he was off the mark. And I was just getting ready to say that was HBU's best defensive possession right there. They got a, 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 a tough shot by Kimani Lawrence, was able to get the rebound and start pushing and put some pressure on Arizona State before they were able to set up defensively. But right there, they turned it over again. Active hands for Arizona State. Arizona State scored an average of 84 points in their first two games to start this year at that multi-team event of the Mohegan Sun. I'm not great with math, but they're on pace to be in the vicinity of 110 in this game as Jalen House draws the foul. I just love when the Sun Devils move the basketball, they move their bodies, the ball hops around. And the ball finds energy. If you have energy on cuts, it usually finds you. Um, I was told that by Coach Doc Rivers. You know, everything you do, do it hard because the ball finds energy. And um, as long as these guys continue to play that way, I, I think they have, the sky's the limit. They're going to have to continue to defend. But if they move their basketball and the ball doesn't stick, I think they have a really fantastic opportunity this year. Certainly one of the keys Bobby Hurley emphasizes. Bobby, one of nine current D1 coaches to win an NCAA title, but he's the only one with two. Go back to Duke's magnificent run, 91-92, and Bobby the most outstanding player of that Final Four. It has been a showcase for Ty Dalton. Really like what he's doing on that end of the floor. Up the double digits now with 10 points. Yeah, he's playing with extreme confidence. And right there, that's Jalen House is just opening up the, the baseline, allowing him for a straight line drive. But when that happens, the bottom big should be the guy rotating over to help to make sure that he doesn't have a clean layup. So it's freshman for freshman after Christopher had that spectacular dunk earlier set up by your son, Jalen House. Christopher, as we mentioned, first McDonald's All-American since James Harden came here. Good recognition by Remy as he drew the double and continued the rotation. Bagley's back on the floor. It's going to be a quarter three for Kamani Lawrence. That's not necessarily his game. He had a real shooting slump a year ago, but Arizona State continues to dictate the terms, and House is having a nice game from beyond the arc. Yeah, knocked down off an of offensive rebound. You want to secure that that uh, that rebound. You close the possession out with a rebound. HBU didn't wasn't able to do that, and usually that's what happens. A, a, a three point shot after an offensive rebound. Jalen up to 11 points, perfect from three point range. He's hit all three of his looks. Yeah, that was Jalen to Jalen. Very nice. Jalen Graham to Jalen House. Man, got to feel good for Jalen to get some playing time after given the details of the matchup against Villanova and how physical their guards are. He did not get a chance to play in the championship game of that tournament at the Mohegan Sun on Thanksgiving. Closing in on a minute left in this decidedly Arizona State controlled first half as it's Martin who continues his pension to draw fouls, and we know he can make his living at the line as well. The details on a big game for Jalen, and we're only closing in on halftime. Probably worth looking up his career high. Top games last year as a freshman, 20 points twice against Texas Southern and Ryder. Yeah, and I, I called one of those games, I believe Texas Southern, and he was extremely... Uh, active that game active with his hands and he was getting to the basket he was making plays i think that's when he's at his best when he lets his offense feed up off his defense remy martin has 12. arizona state has a 30 point lead inside a minute remaining in this first half eam it keeps it moving dalton has meant everything for houston baptist Matched up with Martin through the screen. And you saw the big man, E.A. Yemi, sailing through. He picks up the foul. Tough shot for Dalton there coming off. He has the big closing out to him. 
I would like to see him attack the big on that situation. There was no backside help, so you have opportunity to try to get around the big there and create, get a paint touch and try to create uh, some kind of confusion on the defensive end so you can find somebody for a wide open shot. Bagley, outstanding in his high school career, perhaps motivated, Eddie, by the notion that he was not as highly touted as he should have been coming up at the half. We'll take you to our studio in San Francisco, Pac-12 after dark as Yogi Roth, Nigel Burton will give you their power rankings coming off another wild Saturday in college football. What a comeback it was for UW against Utah on Mont Lake yesterday. If you follow high school recruiting and some of that can be subjective, Bagley was not a top 30 guy. And perhaps that's motivation for a player who certainly has a very refined game in just about every area for a freshman. Yeah, and I wonder who was giving out those rankings. That's a very good question. Who is the evaluator of the talent? And you know, a lot of times those rankings don't mean anything. You know, you got guys that come out, be number one ranked, and end up don't. That they end up not even playing in the league. Martin or, or turning to out to be a good well, and a great college point. player. Remy wasn't a five-star prospect coming out of Southern California. He's done just fine for ASU. About a four-second difference between the clocks. Ron Cottrell calls out the play to Miles Pierre through the Gomes screen. Throws it away. Arizona State will have a chance to expand their lead heading to the locker room. So this certainly fits the offensive philosophy of Arizona State. Mention what they did in the first two games against Rhode Island and number three Villanova, splitting those games at the Mohegan Sun. Bobby Hurley has made the most of his conference opportunities. And you go back to last year when ASU came alive when it mattered the most. They were almost unbeatable at one stretch and and if you go back to the Pac-12 tourney in Vegas they did not get a chance to play because they played so well in the regular season they were the three seed and earned a bye. Yeah I think he just has a, the team it's a reflection of him Bobby has always been a scrapper a fighter a hard nosed type of guy get after defensively he's going to coach you guys he's going to coach the team hard and they're definitely a reflection of that and it, it's, it's refreshing to see that at times because uh, Nowadays, you know, a lot of these kids have been coddled from AAU. He reeled them back in and let them know, hey, this is how it's going to go here at Arizona State. Who's going to take this last shot for ASU? Christopher lost the handle. Bagley open for three, and that is a fitting conclusion for a one-sided first half with Arizona State shining in just about every category. Still, Bobby Hurley's going to keep on coaching. Well, this game was relatively competitive at the outset. Since then, ASU asserted their will. 65-31 at the half. Coming up, we'll take you to the studio. Pac-12 after dark. <clears throat> Ten Arizona State players tallied in the first half. And as we go through the details, you can see just how many players were able to get involved in this one as for Houston Baptist sometimes a overall number can be misleading but we mentioned early on that they gave up the most points in all of D1 basketball last year 94 points a game that's plagued them again this afternoon still some good moments from Ty Dalton the senior from Houston in double figures Hunter Janicek helping him out with nine points so Arizona State in effectively a tune-up in their home opener before they start Pac-12 play Thursday on the road at Haas Pavilion taking on the Cal Bears and Eddie a new dynamic in our conference this year expanding to 20 conference games. Yeah that's the uh, that is a new dynamic but I think it's it's something that you that they had to do with, with COVID the way things are going they had to, to find ways to make the, the season get as many games in as possible. So Arizona State will have an opportunity to give reserves quality playing time, work on their team fundamentals, emphasizing defense. Graham showing off his range once more. A team trying to live up to lofty expectations. Christopher, another flush. 
and just no resistance by HBU there at all. I mean, there wasn't any talking, there wasn't any helping. Clear path to the basket, and Christopher did his job, flushed it on in. Josh has 10 points. Arizona State, currently number 18 in the nation, highest ranked Pac-12 squad, and the hype was building once the national pundits realized Christopher was coming here to Tempe. He's got an NBA future, and he brings an NBA skill set to Arizona State. A team that has never won a Pac-10 or Pac-12 championship in hoops since they in Arizona expanded the old Pacific 8 Conference in the 1970s. Martin has it rolled off, and here's Castro with the pull. ASU also tried to make more program history by going to the NCAA tournament for a third consecutive year. That's not happened since the glory days of the 1960s. Ned Walk, head coach, jumping Joe Caldwell and his teammates as Gomes missed the hook. The kick out from Bagley. Corner three is there for Cherry. Again, the ball touches the paint, gets kicked out to an open shot, an easy shot, and it's a knockdown. I love that offense by Arizona State. Janacek missed from the perimeter. Cherry moves it along. And Bagley now with isolation, a pull-up three. Had the whole side of the floor to himself. And he's certainly capable of making that shot. All yep. the more impressive with his wingspan. Yes, he can. I mean, his shot is pretty as well. It goes in so soft. Dalton off the dribble. Rejected. Timed well by Graham. And that always feels good as a defender, knowing that you could be aggressive on the perimeter, knowing that if you get beat, that you have a guy back there that can clean up your mistake. And that's exactly what Jalen Graham did for Josh Christopher there. Castro. That was not in the right area code for Hunter Yanacek. And that was whistle comes as Christopher slithers forward. Pierre was right there defensively. Well, as we look above, and we already talked about the glorious number five hanging in the rafters here for Eddie House. James Harden's 13 is up there as well. You might be wondering how Josh Christopher is wearing 13 this year. Harden signing off. Because game recognizes game, and he buries the three. Right on cue. Almost like we practiced that. Right? He heard you. <laughs> My voice does project, and of course, we don't have the normal phenomenal atmosphere here. We're all waiting for the fans to come back because you're here more than I am, Eddie. This is one of the most raucous venues in all of college basketball. So entertaining, the curtain of distraction, I love it. Cracks us up, Michael Phelps was there. You imagine if the crowd had been here for this shot, this place would have exploded. It would have erupted. Well, the good news is the curtain of distraction is here. What's behind that curtain? More details coming up. ASU with an 8-0 run to start the second half, and Josh Christopher up to 13 points, matching the number he shares with James Harden. Yeah, he's in his full repertoire is on display right here. He's getting to the basket, showing his athleticism. Right here, coming off of hand dribble handoff, finishing at the rim. But he also could step behind the three and knock shots down with a very nice soft shot. Plays defense is the reason why this guy is on everybody's scout list in the NBA. And we saw his older brother, Caleb Christopher, get onto the floor in the first half. Caleb wears number three. Josh has detailed sports number 13, and they have both worn those digits going back to high school because it reflects their favorite Bible verse from the Book of Psalms. So 13 has much more meaning for Josh Christopher than just the linkage to Harden. We're going old school there with the baby sky hook for Bagley. Yeah, he's paying homage to jumping Joe Caldwell. I, I'm quite sure Joe had that in his repertoire as well. And we know that jumping Joe is a fixture here normally. All-star in the NBA and the ABA, gold medalist, 1964 Olympics. 
And this current team has an opportunity to do some things that this program hasn't done since that remarkable era in the early 1960s. Yeah, and, and right there, that's a, a perfect example of how the ball moves and finds energy. Christopher was able to find Jalen Graham on the post because he cut to the block extremely hard. Marcus Bagley didn't stop at that and just anticipate Jalen Graham was going to make a move. He cut to the basket, was able to slash to the basket, was able to be a recipient of a pass and get to the free throw line. Bagley wound up completing his high school career in Sacramento at Sheldon High in the state capital of California because Marvin was drafted number two overall by the Kings. Marcus averaged 22 and nine last year. But he is your prototypical multi-purpose player. Don't call him a guard, don't call him a forward, just call him a baller, because he can fill it up all over the floor. Castro to Dalton. He's trying to work through that Lee screen. He goes the other way. Finding Bryson Long, happy to be back in the state of Arizona, the true freshman from Gilbert won a state title two years ago here in the Phoenix area. And Bryson Long, knowing where to get the shot, stayed in the corner, anticipated that Dalton was going to drive and kick to him, and that's exactly what happened. Back the other way, Remy Martin continues to fill up his stat line, and that was a moment to savor for Long, although he's got to keep playing. Didn't play in the season opener against TCU. That outside shot, his first college points. Martin has 14. Christopher fouled as he made his move towards the bucket. Arizona State is locked in, up to 78 points already. Another gorgeous day here in the Valley of the Sun. Arizona State shining, shooting 65% floor. Validating where they were picked in the preseason media poll. Number two behind UCLA, but as you see the point breakdown, this was the closest vote in 37 years of balloting. And UCLA with a sluggish start. In fairness, missing some players to begin the year, but had that loss on the road to San Diego State. We know how deep and talented Brian Dutcher's team was a year ago. And the Aztecs will be coming here in a couple weeks. And then UCLA needed triple overtime to survive in advance against Pepperdine the other day. Well, that'll be a good test. San Diego State come in. They're always a really good competitive basketball team, well coached. Um, so I, I think that'll be a good test for ASU. Um, not that they haven't been tested already with Villanova. Oh, but yeah. That's going to be a good test here at home after putting Villanova behind you. And remember, when the original schedule was released for the tournament the Mohegan Sun, ASU was slated to play number two Baylor in the first game of that multi-team tournament, but COVID issues prevented Baylor from heading to Connecticut. Dalton on his way to a three-point opportunity, and now Baylor's in Vegas today playing Washington. And this is just a straight line drive. Nobody helping on the back end of the defense. I know that looking at it, Coach Hurley can't be satisfied with that. You don't want to ever look at the scoreboard and play the score. You want to play the game and continue to do the things that got you that lead. You don't want to start creating any sort of bad habits because you have a, a huge lead on a team. You want to sharpen your skills and keep focused and make sure that you close this game out the right way. Cherry got the personal foul. And we anticipate multiple substitutions in the remaining 14 minutes in this one. Chris Austin back on the floor. He had an impactful run in the first half. And we're going the other way. That's an offensive foul. And that's good defense right there by Dalton. And I, he's, lo he's locked in tonight, uh, today, excuse me. He is playing good basketball on both ends of the court. He's getting after it. He's putting pressure on Arizona State's defense with his drive, with his ability to make shots. I like what I see from Dalton today. He has been the glimmer of hope for Houston Baptist. Had to bail out with that pass as he not only was dealing with the trap, he was right up against the sideline as well. Well, I, didn't, 
played for Kevin Mouton, the former interim head coach at Oregon State at Second Baptist in Houston. Well, I didn't like that. I didn't like that pass at all. Okay. He put himself in a bad situation. As well as he's been playing today, I think he knows better than to put himself in a situation like that. Let's see him bounce back. I believe the boundary is another defender. Someone once told me that. Yeah, that's what they all say. Be quick, but don't hurry, Eddie. Holland Woods back on the floor. Finding Bagley, and he's going to shoot three as Bryson Long fouled him in the act of hoisting that three. <laughs> Good find by Holland Woods. You have to let, allow the shooter to land. You have to allow him to land. You can't go under him. That's, guys can get hurt um, that way. I've known some guys that purposely used to slide their foot under and have a guy roll his ankle. I've heard players say this on the next level. But I could not believe that they said it. It was something that I was like, I was extremely shocked that you would go to that length to hurt somebody to try to make stop him from making a shot. That is professional basketball, and we're dealing with grown adults. Bagley, if you go back to the season opener against Rhode Island, made his living at the line, 10 of 14 from the strike. Also hit a couple threes on his way to the 16-point performance, seventh best debut in the history of Arizona State. He's played well again this afternoon, up to 19 points. Well, I'm guessing that you might have internet access at home, but let me save you the trouble of going to a search engine. If you're wondering about the most points in a single game for ASU, got to go back to 1962. See on the drive and hits. Sun Devils put up 130 against Pasadena, and that deserves context. No three-point shot, no shot clock, so that was a good day for Arizona State. Best game of the Bobby Hurley era, 127. 127 points scored against Citadel in 2016. Another pure shot from Bagley. And he took his time. Once he got it back to the basket, understood he had to mismatch. Just a couple dribbles to get to his spot. Athleticism raise up and let it go. Such a beautiful shot. 21 points now for Bagley. And ASU at one point was tied with Houston Baptist. 8-8 eight, eight feels like a different decade. Darius Lee goes lefty. And here is Castro collecting. Boothman, the Arizona native. Woods with the defensive rebound and gets creative going behind the back. I would like to see a better possession than the last few possessions that Arizona State has had, and it's been those type of shots. Nobody else touching the basketball, not moving the ball and moving your bodies. Again, don't fall into the trap of getting too comfortable because you have this big lead. Boothman's got to feel good about his homecoming. He has hit a couple shots from long range. Backing up what he did as a high school player here in Arizona. Average 26 points, six assists last year in the greater Phoenix metro area from Buckeye. Played at Union High School. Lawrence chiming in after he had a productive first half. That's nine for Kamani coming back from the knee injury. Eddie, the bank is open on a Sunday, on a holiday weekend wrapping up. And when you're a shooter, the bank should always be open. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what you're talking about. Dalton nearly had it. Lawrence drops it down. I don't like Arizona State's energy on the defensive end right now. It's almost like they took their foot off the gas a little bit as uh, Boothman turn, turns it over right there. But I would like to see them turn their energy up a little bit and not play the score, but play the game. After dealing with a knee injury, a uh, robust game from Kamani Lawrence. He has 11, ASU with a huge lead. Marcus Bagley putting on a show. A sensational home debut as ASU has it all working. Yeah, and the youngsters like to say I'm in my bag. Marcus <laughs> Bagley is definitely in his bag. Inside, outside, ISOs right here. Beautiful. Get to your spot. Raise up over the shorter defender. Let it go. Such a soft touch around the rim. Shooting, stretching the floor for a big, for a, a wing player. Sometimes plays the four. Fantastic game so far for, for the young man. 
21 points. He had 16, as mentioned, in the opener against URI, 10 points against Villanova, and the Bears repeating. Most points ever scored by a Sun Devil freshman, Mario Bennett, 35 against Arizona in 92. Josh Christopher was stellar with 28 against Villanova on Thanksgiving. Well, the flow of this one has gotten a bit choppy and certainly doesn't help Houston Baptist that they're facing this kind of deficit. C picked up the foul. And quick conversation with Ron Cottrell, who in addition to being the fifth longest tenured coach amongst active bench bosses, as you saw C reached out against Holland Woods and our officials will go to the monitor. Mike Reed, DJ Nelson, Ryan Holmes, the crew. He extends his left arm a little bit and hits Holland Woods in the throat there. A uh, little unnecessary. I, I, I think he was by Holland Woods. Holland Woods was on his side. Didn't need to extend the arm. All he needed to do was just keep pushing, extend his dribble a little bit and get away from him. But he created the contact because he wanted to have that contact. I believe that's a little bit of frustration there. You look up at the scoreboard, you're down by 42 points. Um, Nothing's been working right for you. Nothing's been going good for the team and a little bit of frustration coming out there. So we'll find out if it's viewed to be flagrant. Was that excessive? That's the question that's being pondered at the monitor. Cottrell's had continuity on his coaching staff. His lead assistant, Stephen Key, has been with him for 27 years. He's the longest active assistant coach with his consecutive tenure in all of D1 basketball. So the review will continue. We have plenty of technology at our disposal. Ron was instrumental in helping this program make the move from the NAIA ranks where they were a national powerhouse, led them into the NCAA where they've had some challenging moments. So another look, and this comes down to interpretation and now our crew will have a conversation led by referee Mike Reed. I believe it was a foul, definitely, obviously. So after all of that, a common foul. There, there we go. Play on. Yeah, I didn't see much there that would warrant any kind of flagrant or anything like that. It, it was a little frustration, tried to create some space. But again, at this juncture of the game, I would like to see Arizona State hunker down a little bit defensively, make sure that they're locked in, that they keep their principles, that they try to stay as disciplined as possible on both ends of the floor so you do not pick up any bad habits with a San Diego State team coming in. Yes, because beyond the challenge of Pac-12 play starting Thursday at Cal, ASU has some tests looming in non-conference play. They'll go in and out of conference and non-conference before the full slate of conference action gets underway. Martin rifles it to Lawrence. Back to Remy for three. That shot was flat, but we've seen him make some funky shots over the years. Yeah, we, excuse me, yeah, we have. not But that possession there, two guys touched the basketball. I like, uh, again, I've, I've been saying it all day. I love when everybody gets a chance to touch the basketball because it helps them. He has been much more active than the limited minutes he had in the loss Houston Bath to suffered at TCU, and that wasn't close either on Wednesday, 69 to 45. And we know that we have viewers all over the country and all over the world. So let's give you some details on Darius from New York City. Played at St. Raymond's in the rugged Catholic League in the Big Apple. And he's got to deal with the curtain. We may not have many fans here, but the tradition continues. The iconic curtain of distraction lives on. Now we just need the 942 crew back in the house. Was that the Easter Bunny and Ted? 
My man, I was reading the life story of Darius Lee. I looked over and there was a bear staring me in the face. So I had to stay in character there. So yes, we have a variety of stuffed animals, a menagerie, if you will. And in fact, if you want to get your face inside this gym as a cardboard representation of yourself, all you have to do is head over to thesundevils.com. It's the Sun Devil Fan Cutout Initiative with the proceeds benefiting the student athletes here on campus at ASU. Did you happen to see when Arizona, and that's a wonderful smile here in Tempe, when Arizona finally was able to play against Grambling the other day, there was a Bobby Hurley cutout in Tucson. Wow. That's blasphemy. Somebody's wow. going to get a stern talking to at the U of A athletic department. How did that slip through the software? Lee inside. EA Yemi hanging tough. Tremendous defense by Austin. And that's what he's going to bring this team on a daily basis. He is a rugged individual. Well, as often is the case, when a game gets lopsided, the flow gets lost, and this one has gotten a little ticky-tacky. Here's what's coming up for Arizona State. So they're going to take on the Cal team that has already played Oregon State at Gill Coliseum in non-conference action. Then a tough test here in Tempe against San Diego State. Local matchup against Grand Canyon. UTEP was scheduled to play Arizona today. That game unable to be played because of a positive test with the Miners. And you think about their history going back to their run as Texas Western and the legend, the Bear, Don Haskins on the sideline. Cardate Ward, then it's on to the rest of Pac-12 play. So another coaching component that Bobby Hurley has to emphasize to his team as Dalton beat the clock but missed the shot. There's a mental, mental aspect of having to raise your intensity for a conference game and then human nature says you might drop off a little bit going back out of conference as Christopher demonstrates the soft touch. But just one more thing that has to be navigated here in 2020 and we know everything has changed in this unprecedented year for all of us and that move by Christopher there you could tell that he has that that pro game those type of players always play at a certain pace they're never in a rush house that was a lot of contact no whistle Dalton stood his ground e yay yemi well, there's the old principle of verticality. Mm -hmm. If you go up straight, the officials are supposed to let them play. Yeah, and, and, and in that situation, sometimes it's, uh, you could pull up for your jumper right there. You don't have to take that hit. Or if you're going to take it in, take it in strong, and you try to go through their chest. But nine times out of ten, that is a foul. Caleb Christopher back on the floor, and he'll get run here with the opportunity to hook up with his brother Josh. I had... Caleb back on the floor earlier when it was Jalen House throwing up that sensational alley-oop. In addition to being instrumental in bringing his brother Josh here to the Valley of the Sun, Caleb was very focused on social justice in the offseason. Came up with a concept for Arizona State's Black Lives Matter logo drawn by a local artist, Dennis Kennedy, who's a big ASU fan. Caleb did extensive research and was able to ascertain the details that included the name of every African-American student athlete here in Tempe. Their names appear in that logo. And how about that? That is just a great job by a young man, very thoughtful, um, understanding the climate, everything that's been going on here uh, within the last year or so, but also for many years uh, to recognize that and, and push that forward. You got to salute that young man for that. Coming up on eight minutes remaining, Arizona State closing in on the century mark. The lead is 40. 
They led by 34 at the half. But we know there's plenty of material for Bobby Hurley to utilize as he continues to not only coach in game, but have those hard practice sessions prior to the Cal game as Christopher keeps it going, showing off the mid-range game. He's got 17 points. Again, at that pace, and we've seen that a lot today from Bagley, from Christopher, the mid-range game, which I think is a lost art in, in today's basketball world. Everybody wants a three or a layup, but the mid-range, you can eat there. Look at Kobe, look at Michael Jordan, look at Paul Pierce. Guys made livings from the mid-range. Ty Dalton scored his 15 points. Caleb Christopher off the mark and slow to get up. And there was a little bit of a situation in which Caleb was tangled up with Ty Dalton. And we saw Josh Christopher come over to his brother's aid. That's brotherly love right there. Hey, man. Get I got off, your back. Get off my brother. <laughs> Arizona State in total control. 93-53 here at Tempe. It is tip-off week presented by Tums. Arizona State has been thoroughly dominant. And let's take you through... The last sequence, as Caleb Christopher took the shot, you'll see him get tangled up with Ty Dalton. His brother, Josh Christopher, coming over. And now the officials at the monitor reviewing the situation. Yeah, and he, uh, the ref just came over and said it's a flagrant one on 13 for a push on Josh Christopher for pushing uh, two shots in the ball uh, for HBU. But hey, that's what can you say as a, a father? I know the Christopher's fathers must be proud to say, hey, man, because the little big brother got sent down and the big little brother went over there and had his back. <laughs> and now we know the what they're teaching at home, continues. man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the right move from the family perspective. Now, given the scoreboard, it's not going to hurt Arizona State, but when we get to conference play, those kind of moments can turn a game. I'm sure Bobby Hurley will emphasize that. If it was a hockey game, second hockey reference today. We don't even know when the NHL is going to start. When you're the next guy in, the third man in, you're yeah. always going to be the one who is the guilty party. Here's Dalton now shooting the technicals. I just think instinct took over right there for Josh yeah. Christopher. He sure. just looked like, hey, man, get off my, little, get off my big brother, That's man. my big brother who's... Diminutive, how about that? He's not as tall as me, and he came to his aid, and unfortunately, that's been a microcosm of the game for HBU. Dalton merely 64% from the line last year. Misses both. Not that it would matter much overall, because at this point, it's academic. Now, the officials have done a good job at controlling the emotions, because we've seen now two incidences and this often happens when a game gets out of hand of chippy play and now the goal is to get through this one without anything getting too serious mckenzie makes his move on the baseline and the senior from the bahamas can't drop it down woods all the way in and the follow by graham spins off i like the attack by holland woods but there he could have dropped it off to his big man for a nice dunk your big fella ran the floor as hard as he can. You like to reward him. Oh, and that was a hard foul by Christopher, but making a basketball play on Dalton. Nothing wrong with that. Someone takes it to the paint. There are consequences. And you can hear that's one of the byproducts of having limited fans. Josh saying to the officials, I just wanted to talk to you about what's transpired lately. He was talking to Holland Woods there. Okay. They wanted to talk about something. There was, uh, it, it wasn't heated at all, mm -hmm. but it was one of those things that have to happen. And you look over there right now, Coach Hurley has both of them, Holland Woods and Josh Christopher, and they're talking. Right. You like to see that. There's going to be those moments sure. to where you're going to, Kind of butt heads a little bit, but it needs to get talked through so you guys can be on the same page. Thank you for the clarification. I heard just a little bit of Josh, and I made the presumption that was a conversation directed towards the men with whistles. Instead, that was internal stuff with 640 remaining. 
Christopher. That's Caleb. Well short. You bar now. Josh back on the bench with his 17 points. He's been highly efficient. Eight of 11 floor. Arizona State. Ranked in the preseason top 25 for the first time since 2008. At number 18, highest ranked Pac-12 school. Boothman with the assist, and Dalton hits the three. Dalton's been the bright spot for HBU today. Offensively, defensively, he took a charge. If there's a silver lining in this game, is is Dalton for HBU. Dalton now has 19 points to lead Houston Baptist. Closing in on a career high of 21 that he's achieved twice. And that was just a bad turnover by Jalen House. He's trying to lob it over the top. It's a bad angle. You got to dribble it to the baseline to create a better angle to give an easy pass to your big. Dalton behind the back to McKenzie, who played his high school basketball in North Carolina. He was looking for EA Yemi. Good look. At Pavlo Zuba, we talked about his unique status at 17, the youngest player in all of D1 hoops, giving this team an international perspective. Freshman from Ukraine. Represented Ukraine last summer in the U16 Euro Championship. He's also played for FC Barcelona under 18 team and he's built more like a football player if you take a look at him uh, look at his lower frame compared to Kimani Lawrence's lower frame oh, well, we know coach Herm is watching and one of these weeks Arizona State's going to play a football game game right Eddie they're going to be able to get back on the field one of these days I can let you know that the schedule says Arizona State will be playing again next week against UCLA here in Tempe over at Sun Devil Stadium. Then it's on to Tucson for the Territorial Cup. Unfortunately, Herm's team unable to play since they lost that heartbreaking game November 7th in the season opener to USC. And Jalen Graham with a good move there. Another mature move. Got the ball, felt the double team, went away from it over the left shoulder, jump hook. Yeah, check. Went inside. EA Emmy couldn't get it. Caleb Christopher, Jalen House finds Zuba, who is fouled. And a big smile from the big man. No, I hate to remind myself that my college years were a long time ago. Pablo was born in 2003. Man. What were you doing in 2003? I was with, it depends on what part of 2000, <laughs> depends on what part of 2003 where I was at. I could have been either in L.A. with the Clippers or I could have been with the Miami Heat. I know you were in the association. Yes. I was not doing the full quiz of the many teams that you've made an impact for. Arizona State four points away from cracking the century mark. As we approach five minutes remaining in this one, it really hasn't been competitive since the early stages of the first half when it was tied at eight early on. Janacek is fouled. And I believe every player that checked in for Arizona State has scored. Right, with Zuba hitting that free throw, every player who has logged any time today is on the stat sheet. That would be a comprehensive approach. And one thing that could be beneficial for Arizona State is getting more opportunities at the line because we know when we get to Pac-12 play how many games come down to what you do at the stripe and that was not a positive for this team a year ago. 69.5% second worst in the Pac-12. And also think this is a great opportunity. You, you don't look at the score again. I, I harp on this a lot. You don't look at the score. You look at this for opportunity to make sure that you play your best game and you don't pick up any bad habits. If you're on a fringe of a rotation player, you got to take this as, as a tie game and make sure you're as solid as possible. Lawrence to Caleb Christopher, who will back it out. Kamani looking fully healthy, coming back from the knee injury. Graham faces up, matched up with McKenzie with the hook. 
Lawrence on the offensive glass puts it down. Kamani's been extremely active on the glass. Another opportunity break. House the kick out. Another air ball for Caleb Christopher. Lawrence now has 13 points for the Sun Devils. That three knocked down by the Arizona native Boothman. It usually happens like that. You air ball and it ends up in a transition three. You got to get back defensively. That's what you have to do. Like I said, you don't want to pick any of bad habits up if you're Arizona State. You want to close this last four minutes out playing strong basketball, disciplined basketball. Lawrence was trying to feed the post. Couldn't hook up with Graham. Perimeter look, Pedro Castro, who was unable to build on the 13 points he had earlier in the season opener against TCU. Arizona State, two away from 100 here in Tempe. Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tip-Off Week is presented by Tums for fast heartburn relief. ASU continues to cruise past Houston Baptist. Now in stat time here in Tempe. Arizona State checking in at number 18 in the preseason. AP poll, highest ranked Pac-12 school. You see UCLA picked to win the conference, presumably going to fall out of the top 25 after losing to San Diego State. And Eddie, a real dilemma for Oregon. Unable to play because their opponents have had COVID issues. But think about what this team is going to do, trying to move on without Peyton Pritchard, who, like Remy Martin, could have gone pro last year, came back for another year in Eugene, earned Pac-12 Player of the Year honors, and wound up being a first-round selection of the Boston Celtics. Let me do the broadcaster obligatory line. That would not have been goaltending in international basketball on the cylinder. Zuba's got to make the adjustment to how we play hoops here in the States. Yeah, he has. He's going to have to make it fast, too, if you want to stay out on the court. You can't goal 10. You can't goal 10. You can't goal 10. I say it three times for him. It's worth it because it was worth two free points. But we know the Ducks are still loaded for Dana Altman. Janicek misses. Rattles out. Inside, two minutes remaining. In 45 seconds. The bench has been completely emptied now. Kyle Fight, walk on redshirt sophomore from West Palm Beach, has only played 16 minutes in his career. Number 30 on the floor, lead to the goal. It's a three point chance. And to me, when when plays like this start happening, right, and you're looking at how you're turning the ball over, all the good work that some of these players have done, you kind of negated by falling in the trap of playing the score, and not playing the game. And that's a challenge, but that's what highly successful teams are able to do. You have to compartmentalize, especially a team that's trying to go. Back to the NCAA tournament for the third consecutive year. ASU's not done that since the 1960s. Also hoping to win their first basketball title in either the Pac-10 or the Pac-12. Micah Berno playing now. Son of Rashawn, the longtime associate head coach and a key figure in ASU's recruiting success. Jalen House drops it down. Jalen with 13. ASU now with 100. Janicek draws the foul. And I think that 130 is going to be safe for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was really selling that like we were going to have a moment of history here. The flow of this one bogged down a bit. Understandable as the game got out of hand. But many positives beyond the scoreboard for Bobby Hurley to reflect upon this team 
over the last two years, coming off of defeat 16 and 5. Best record in the Pac 12. John Olmstead on the floor. Sophomore from Morrency, Arizona. That is Copper Country. About 200 miles from where we are. That is the very definition of a lane violation, but not costly. ASU is going to raise their record to 2 and 1. Houston Baptist going to fall to 0 and 2, getting ready for a trip from Houston to Dallas to take on SMU. And the whistle comes as bodies tangle up in the lane. It is Darius Lee going to the line. Arizona State rebounding dynamically after that tough assignment, taking on number three Villanova. Carved into the lead, and Bobby Hurley's team only lost by nine at the Mohegan Sun. And then we saw, and what I think is foreshadowing, a very unpredictable year in college basketball. Nova lose last night to Virginia Tech. We saw Virginia, the reigning NCAA champs, lose to the San Francisco Dons, putting up a win that they haven't had since Bill Russell was playing on the hilltop back in the day. House to Berno. Olmstead draws the double. A three. Rims off for fights. Final minutes as ASU has effectively dictated every phase of the game. Good to see the Arizona connection as Boothman, all-state performer at Union High and Buckeye, hits another three. Four of eight from distance in this one. He's got 12 points. Won't go for a house. But now, Arizona State has to turn their attention to the challenge of conference play. Thursday on the road at Cal. Back at home December 10th with that very intriguing game against San Diego State looming here in Tempe. Should be the final possession. Putting the finishing touches on a complete victory. ASU led 65-31 at halftime. They're going to win it 100 to 77, dismantling Houston Baptist in the home opener. Yeah, I liked a lot what Arizona did in the first half. They attacked them defensively. They turned them over. They moved the basketball. Remy set the tone early with the first couple possessions coming out, trying to find his players on the perimeter to make shots. Then he started creating for himself. So they need to build on that. Um, I think they kind of lost it a little bit in the second half by playing the score, but all in all, a good game, and they got to build on this. Trying to take it into what lies ahead. We talked about the next game, the Pac-12 opener on the road in the Bay Area against Cal at Haas Pavilion. Every player in the significant portion of this game scored for Arizona State before they emptied the bench in the final minutes. Bagley with 21, Josh Christopher 17, Martin 16. It all adds up to an ASU victory. From our broadcast partner, Eddie House, and our hardworking and talented production team, I'm Brian Weber. It's a convincing win for Arizona State. So long from Tempe, Arizona.